our U.S. military, and this is not hyperbole, I've said it for the last two years, is the strongest military in the history of the world. Not just the strongest in the world, in the history of the world. The most diverse, the most powerful in the history of the world. And it's being accused of being weak and woke by the opposition. One guy in Alabama is holding up the promotion of every hundreds of these officers. Frankly, these extremists have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Hey, folks, Dale Jackson here for Yellow Hammer Now. And I'll tell you, we've got to talk a little bit about how ridiculous uh, Joe Biden is here. Uh, he talks about how this isn't hyperbole. Which, of course, means he's lying. I mean, that's a, a Joe Biden giveaway. I'm telling you the truth. As a Biden, I tell you, I never lie. Which means that he lies all the time. And he's lying about this. Hammering away on Tommy Tuberville. One guy from Alabama, uh, a MAGA senator, doesn't know what he's talking about. Let's talk about people not knowing what they're talking about. Let's talk about Joe Biden and him talking about how we're the strongest we've ever been militarily. It's just a factually inaccurate and stupid statement for the President of the United States to say. I get that he's trying to pump up himself. Maybe he's trying to pump up the military. But he just sounds like an idiot because the facts aren't on his side. The United States Navy revealing they will likely fall short of their 37,000 sailor recruiting goal for the year, estimating that they'll be short 7,000 new sailor recruits. Could woke Department of Defense policies be to blame? At least yes. Yes, they could be. And I think that's pretty obvious, and everyone knows it, including Joe Biden. But he doesn't care. He doesn't care one bit. He does not care. And you can continue. Listen to what these guys have to say about why they serve. Pete Hegseth, a Fox News host, served in the military, still does, I believe. Listen to his guest. They'll tell you what being in the military is all about. Part or a big part. Retired Army Ranger and Special Forces Operator Tim Kennedy joins us with his take. Tim, great to see you. That's a big number, missing your mark by 7,000. Uh, there's been a lot of ways in which the Navy is recruited to include trans videos from sailors saying, we want you to serve too. What do you make of the Navy falling so short and, and shortages across the DOD? Yeah, I... I I think we've failed to identify our identity. You know, we are a warrior nation, and um, serving your country should transcend personal identity. And when we're pointing towards a personal identity, whatever that be, um, it, we're, we're doing it wrong. You know, yeah. we, we have been the most inclusive body of people in American history, the military. You know, looking back to like Triple Nickel, the Tuskegee Airmen, Navajo Wind Talkers, we were always the first to bring in with open arms as many as we could that wanted to serve their country, but the operative word was serve. So I think we're really missing the mark on who we're trying to talk to here. It's 100% true. It's exactly right. We're trying to talk to a small group of people because it's the politically correct thing to do. It's not good for the military. You can factor in the vaccine mandates as well. That's a factor in all of this too. But it's just a continuation of the disease of wokeness and how it's eating the military alive. Now, the 7,000 people that are off in the Navy, I think it's like 20-something thousand in the military. They're all down. It's going to be a train wreck everywhere. We're not the strongest military we've ever had. We're getting weaker every single day. Our diversity is not strength in this regard. We should all be trying to become one in the military, not a bunch of different groups that focus on their gender identity or who they like to have sex with. It's just an absurd idea. And Tim Kennedy, a former Army Ranger, keeps pointing that out. It's an important point. You join the military not so that you can stand out as an individual, but so that you can join a team that has a bigger purpose. And so if you're appealing to a certain identity, you get a certain person, or you don't get anybody at all. I mean, how much is the military... How much do you think the whole the woke thing, the DEI thing, the trans thing has to do with how potential recruits view the Navy or the Army or any service? That's a, it's, a, it's a good question, Pete. You know, I, 
I want everyone to know that the military, and you know this, we, we do not look at skin color, we do not look at race, Absolutely. creed, religion, like come and serve, but know that you are gonna be part of the baddest group of people on the planet. And we're the baddest group of people on the planet because we wanna serve. You know, and, and America being a superpower has been squandered in every single measurable way. Scientific, technology, production, manufacturing. The one thing that is keeping us there in that seat is our military and it's because it's full of men and women that want to serve. You know, them picking specifically a trans group, which which is less than a tenth of a percent within the military. You know, like why they're making these strategic decisions blows my mind. You know, 16% of military are women that can now serve at the front line on combat arms in special operations. Let's target them. You know, but most importantly, like we need war fighters because we are looking at perhaps the scariest enemy in our nation's history. It's exactly right. And what are we doing about it? We're trying to be woke and it's hurting us. Tommy Tuberville knows this. Uh, what is Joe Biden mad about? Well, a statement that Tommy Tuberville made uh, after he said no to the Joint Chiefs of Staff chairman. And, and of course, Tuberville explained this. And he said, look, I don't like the way he talked about race and wokeness and things like that. He goes on to say our military is not an equal opportunity employer, which it actually is technically. Tuberville's wrong here. Uh, but his point is correct. We should be looking for the best to do whatever. That's correct. That's what we should be doing. We're not looking for different groups, social justice groups. We don't want to single-handedly destroy our military from within. And doing this the way they're doing it with the numbers they're doing it with it is going to do just that. It's going to limit our ability to get things done. They've already called up individual ready reserve uh, people, people who are out, who fulfilled their initial contract, but still had some time in their eight-year window. I thought I'd be called up after 9-11 under that. I wasn't, but I, I thought that was a possibility. It always is. Uh, but the reason they're doing it now is not because of some mission. They're doing it just because they can't recruit. And they can't recruit because they're going woke. And I want you to listen to the beginning of what Joe Biden has to say here. I played it for you at the beginning, and I'll play it again. Just listen to the beginning. Our U.S. military, and this is not hyperbole. He's a liar. And one of the things he does when he's lying is he says he's not lying. It's a tell. It's like when he says, take my word as a Biden. Well, you know he's really lying then, and he's probably on crack cocaine too. But he's definitely lying. So... What I'm saying is not hyperbole. Now what I'm about to say is a lie. I've said it for the last two years. It's the strongest military in the history of the world. Under what metric is that? Under what metric does a military that misses recruiting by tens of thousands, under what metric are they the strongest in the world? Not just the strongest in the world, in the history of the world. The most diverse most powerful in the history of the world. It's blatantly not true. I mean, it is just blatantly not true. And it's being accused of being weak and woke by the opposition. One guy in Alabama is holding up the promotion of every hundreds of these officers. Frankly, these extremists have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Look at this man. A grown man can barely stand up straight. And he's saying people don't know what the hell they're talking about. This is pathetic. And this is the president of the United States lying. Attacking a United States senator because he's not saying the thing he wants him to say. Joe Biden is a pathological liar. There is no question about that. He is a pathological liar. He is a no good human being and a pathological liar. And in this particular incident, he is once again telling a lie, a lie he knows is a lie. He's then telling you that he's telling you that lie by saying this is not a lie. It's a lie. Joe Biden's a liar. The military is weaker because of the things Joe Biden is doing. The guy in Alabama knows exactly what the hell he's talking about. And you can pretend that he doesn't. But it's Betty by time for Joe Biden. You can tell in this clip because he can barely stand up. He's as weak as he's trying to make the United States military. And he 
needs to really think about what he's doing here and how it's going to affect our nation down the line if we cannot recruit. The people put out by vaccines, they should be allowed back in. The woke garbage needs to stop. If someone does something wrong in the military, racially, sexually, otherwise, get them out. Pretending everyone is a criminal beforehand because of their race or their gender, which is a lot of what's happened in the military, that needs to stop. But Joe Biden doesn't know what the hell he's talking about.